Hello, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to another adventure. This is Nikki with Cast King on the line. And today we have another special guest, Mr. Calico Oligo. What a beautiful name. Calico, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Nicole. Glad to be on. I'm so happy to have you on. Uh, I know you're you are busy. You're constantly traveling. Uh, <laughs> you are from Hawaii, so you are you're all over the place. And uh, it, it should, to get a hold of you and finally get you to come on the show, it's really great. I'm really excited. Um, do you like the background? I love it. I love it. Reminds me of home. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, Thank that's you. great. That made my day then. Um, Calico, I, now please explain your name. It, it's longer, right? It, it is sure and it's a tradition uh, I should I shouldn't say here there in Hawaii I'm currently based here in Denver Colorado um, Calico short for my full name which is Calico Mino Akalani and brace yourself to in full transparency it means heavenly child with a dimpled smile <laughs> oh that's beautiful Calico <laughs> Oh, I love it. I always get made fun of my dimples. So, I mean, that, that's great. <laughs> it's the best birth defect. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I, I love it. I can't help but smile when someone says, oh, you have dimples. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. What a beautiful name. Beautiful. Thanks. I can't. I am not going to try to say it, though, because I will butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so great. Uh, Calico, please. Are uh, you Hawaii? So you were yeah. born in Hawaii? Yes, a lot of folks call us crazy. My wife and I are originally from Hawaii. My wife is from the Big Island, which she just came back uh, to visit her mom and family there. Uh, I'm from the island of Kauai, which uh, I believe is the best of all eight islands. And the reason why I feel it's the best, uh, not because of fishing, which I'm sure we'll get into, um, but if you ever go and visit uh, the island of Kauai, it's like taking a time machine back, you know, 20, 30 years where oh, life slows down. Um, people genuinely want to have a, a conversation with you. The beaches are obviously beautiful. The landscape, you can go from hiking uh, in the mountains of Koke'e to swimming in the beach of Keka within 30 minutes. Oh, so. Goodness. In, you know, in the outdoor sense, you can bow hunt, archery, hogs, blacktail, um, uh, goats, uh, you name it. Or you can go uh, kayaking in the afternoon, uh, fishing on the beach uh, to your heart's content. So um, such, a, amazing. <laughs> such an amazing place. I want to go. I want to yeah. go. <laughs> well, that, let's, con <laughs> let's convince Al. To yes, shoot a casking <laughs> uh, segment there in Hawaii, and we'll we'll, we'll we make could, it happen. We could do my outdoor show, Casking Fishing Frenzy Live. I could have you on the outdoor show. That'd be great, Hawaii. Let's, Here let's I come, Hawaii. <laughs> 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 That's perfect. Oh, I can't yeah. wait. That sounds really good. I'm actually gonna look into that. That's really good. Yep. Oh, it sounds beautiful, Coleco. Your home sounds really, really beautiful. Um, now you go back a lot. You keep constantly go what's your yes. travel like yes so uh i do travel for a living uh, i work for a large uh scale assessment uh organization based out of iowa uh, i oversee uh the hawaiian islands uh we have a uh an agreement there so i fly to the island of oahu i should say i used to fly to oahu uh <laughs> for work uh, to ensure we uh, are delivering on, on, on our obligations. But I also go back and visit a lot of my family, which majority of my family uh, is on the island of Kauai. Of course, just like I mentioned, my wife's family is on the big island. So um, going to school there from K through 12 and being an alumni of UH Hilo, uh, which is the east side of the big island, uh, we have a lot of uh, friends and family that when we go there, you know, everything's a celebration. Everything's a, you know, like a gathering and uh, we love that. And we also want to make sure that uh, our two daughters, uh, both six and 10, um, get to experience what we've experienced growing up. Um, of course, it's easy to get the Hawaiians, as I call them, come 
and visit us here in uh, Denver, Colorado, you know, snow, the snowboarding, ice fishing uh, is, is something of a novelty to folks in Hawaii. Uh, what attracted me to make the move here in Denver, Colorado. So uh, we try to get back every year uh, and see the family. So that's got to be such a big difference for you, Hawaii to Colorado. I mean, what a what a change, you know, temperature and, and just everything like you just explained outdoor activities. Uh, it's just that's got to be culture shock. It's got to be a, a shock to your your body, your system. Was it? Oh, is, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in the winter, my skin hates me because yeah. it's so dry and, you know, powering through uh, an ice fishing uh, session in the mountains here in Colorado it's it's tough but you you catch these lunkers of trout which you know keeps me wanting to you know make those two and a half hour drives in negative 10 degree weather also the uh elevation was something i had to get used to too yeah. um what what uh found me in the continental united states is that i played minor league baseball for a couple years and my wife was uh at the time going to grad school here in Colorado. So a long story made longer, we stayed here in uh, Denver, Colorado after I retired from baseball. <laughs> wait, and, wait. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and my wife finished uh, her graduate program uh, at the University of Northern Colorado. So um, we've been here and the number always changes. I think it's like 16 or 17 years we've been oh, here God. in Denver, Colorado and I absolutely love it. Granted, the beach, the beach that I'm looking at, at in, your, in your background or <laughs> what I just talked about, uh, Mount uh, Nepali Coast, which you see in the background here, is certainly my first loves. But when it comes to the mountains, the Rocky Mountains, to be very specific, um, I absolutely love it. That's amazing. And, and it's nothing compared to Hawaii and Denver, but me, I'm from New York and okay. I moved to Florida. Uh, I was originally born in Florida as a baby, taken from here, moved back to New York. So I grew up in New York and then I moved back to Florida. So it was such a difference on my body, you know, uh, temperature wise. If the temperature falls below 80 here, I'm freezing. I'm in sweats. I'm in a hoodie, literally cold. It's hilarious. And, you know, my system and just trying to get used to that. And then the fishing, so different from New York to Florida. Um, you know, I thought I was gonna come out here and catch big bass right away uh, being from New York. And it was such a difference. I had to learn a whole new basic skill set. I had to learn a whole new different type of fishing, a different way to catch the fish. Um, and the people, how different the people are, more laid back. In New York, we were fast paced, on the go, constantly moving. Florida is just like almost Jamaica, Irie man, you know, hey, you, you know, laid back, cool man. You know, just chill. And uh, so it's just, it's, it's a lot different. Uh, and it took me a little while to get used to it. Uh, but I tell you what, I don't ever want to be anywhere else. I love Florida. I call it my home. It's beautiful. Um, and so I know, I know exactly how you feel. Again, it's nothing compared to Hawaii and, and Denver, but uh, I've always wanted to go to, to Hawaii. So, yeah. But, uh, you yeah. know, I, I only have uh, a handful of fishing experiences in Florida, and I don't know if you can still consider this Florida, we were in Anna Maria Island, um, I guess south of Tampa Bay. Okay. And it seems like every beach we went to, the water felt like it was 78 degrees. Uh, <laughs> there was manatees everywhere, you know, and um, at first being from Hawaii, you see a dark, big blotch in the water. You're like, whoa, that's a, that's a shark. Maybe that's we should backing up but no it's this gigantic gentle manatee Manatees. moving through the swim beach how beautiful and um yeah. the fishing was incredible uh, on Ina Maria Island so oh, yeah. uh, any chance I can go back with my with my rod in hand I'd I'd love to to try Absolutely. it out Absolutely. I know exactly, exactly how you feel. Really good fishing here. Um, let me just excuse you for one second. We have to have a word from our sponsors quick here. Uh, Cast King offers you affordable innovation through the best fishing tackle, including a wide variety of quality fishing rods, fishing reels, fishing line, and fishing accessories. Look for Cast King products on Amazon.com, TackleWarehouse.com, AcademyOutdoors.com, eBay, and of course, CastKing.com. Make the switch to Cast King like so many pro fishing pros have. And we are back with Coleco Oligo, right? 
<laughs> I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> what a beautiful name. And uh, we were just talking about his home in Hawaii and uh, talking about fishing in Florida. Uh, so tell us about your fishing. What do you fish for? Uh, you fish for everything. I see yep. your pictures on Instagram. <laughs> Anything that tugs, really. And uh, I come from a long line of fishermen and women uh, in the islands of Hawaii, um, both sides, dad's side, uh, as well as mom's side. Um, but actually, my true passion is spearfishing. Um, that was uh, one of the first uh, angling type, fishing type. Uh, that I learned um, free diving. So one breath hold, go seek out either predator fish or my favorite, the parrot fish or uhu, baked, steamed. You know, in my opinion, it's one of my favorite uh, fishes to enjoy and to share uh, amongst family and friends. Um, but then, of course, I, I started um, shore fishing. I've worked on commercial fishing boats, uh, fishing ahi or uh, yellowfin tuna. Beautiful. Wahoo. Uh, or ono, uh, dolphin fish, or mahi uh, throughout high school. Uh, coming back from college, I worked for a boat builder. So we did um, uh, sightseeing tours, snorkeling tours. And then he had kind of a combination boat that I used to work on, uh, which we snorkeled in the morning. And then we fished, uh, deep sea fished in the afternoon. And that was my favorite boat. It was a very intimate boat where we took a couple families or private charter and basically did what they want. And I had the ability to really talk about the, 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 uh, the island from a local perspective. And uh, so through college, I did that. <clears throat> uh, when I moved to Denver, uh, the two uh, types of fishing that attracted me was obviously fly fishing, but ice fishing. I just, I just think it's the coolest thing to do in the winter to drill a hole and pull fish out of a, <laughs> out of a lake. So um, it, 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 I, I attracted to that fly fishing. It was, it was really cool because one, you can disappear in the Rocky mountains quickly uh, and find streams that, you know, you can fish and keep going. And if it's a bad fishing day, well, it turns quickly into a sightseeing tour because the uh, terrain here in the Rockies is just amazing. So that's kind of the short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love your outlook on it. Very positive. You know, it, that's what I always say. I always try to reiterate that fact is the fish are always the bonus. It's being outside in mother nature and being immersed in nature that that's, that's the plus. That's the big thing. You're outside, you're outdoors, you're, you know, you're living, catching a fish. That's just the bonus. That's like, man, that's the icing on the cake right there. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. right. So what would you say would be your favorite type of fishing? Well, to, to immediately say, you know, kayak fishing has, um, has taken me uh, on, a, on a hell of a ride, to be honest. Um, <laughs> and we can get into that in a little bit. Um, and I like kayak fishing because one, um, fitness is a big part of my life. Uh, and uh, with, you know, my, my hobby, I can kind of sort of get some fitness with my paddling. But, you know, when you're finding fish when you're on fish, you're pretty much stationary and casting and whatnot. Um, but the reason why I like uh, kayak fishing is because, you know, you can, you can really turn off much of the noise. Uh, and in some lakes, they only allow, here in Colorado, they only allow either electric motors or, um, you know, uh, pedal or um, pedal boards uh, to say that as well as kayaks. So, with all that being said, I like kayak fishing. Uh, one, because you can get into those lakes. Two, you can still fly fish. And so on my kayak, uh, my kayak's a 14-foot Hobie, I can set up my Yeti cooler and use it almost kind of like a skiff, a casting yeah. deck where I can sight cast, you know, trout and et cetera. And it, it's amazing. When you got a 360 view of a lake, backdrop of the Rockies, completely silenced hearing the trout break the water or pike break the water um it's it's pretty cool experience <laughs> i can imagine i do i i've i have i have not gotten into the kayaking part i've done some of it um it i gotta 
I got to do, I got to get into a better kayak. I have to, and I have to do it more. I did it just once and I was constantly moving and it was hard for me. I would go to cast and the kayak's moving around. I want to stay. I don't want to scare the fish. I want to stay in one spot. And, you know, I was just, I had a bad experience the first time. So it turned me off of it. So I want to yeah. get back out there and, and, and do it again. I want to be, um, I want to be able to do different types of fishing, you know, be involved in different, you know, and be immersed in it and just learn different types, just, you know, be a better fisherman that way, you know? Absolutely. And I attracted to Hobie um, because I have a bunch of colleagues that are in Hawaii that fish ahi out of their kayak. Oh, wow. And I got to experience that firsthand. And I have to say, Nicole, you got to have a couple screws loose to go out <laughs> in the Pacific ocean, you know, and I think that day red, they're like, Oh, it's 14 to 16 foot seas should be okay. Maybe we get in before noon and we'll be fine. Oh and we, as we're getting out the, you know, these commercial boats are looking at us. They're like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? You psychos? <laughs> <What? Crazy. laughs> so we head out and my buddies was like, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna do a triangle, you know, uh, deal around this pinnacle that comes up about 1200 feet um, because between islands, it gets pretty deep. You know, I'm on the island of Kauai, we're fishing what's called the Kaulakahi Channel, which uh, is in the middle of the island of Mi'ihau and Kauai. And so we're out there and we're not far. You can, you can catch pelagic fish uh, in Hawaii, you know, a couple hundred yards off shore. So as we're getting off, uh, we're using live bait called Opelu, uh, which is, I believe, a SCAD family. I could be wrong on that. Um, anyway, we, we send these guys down and I'm not, I'm not completely sure why tuna does this, but they do, and I'm a firm believer. But they're not hard strikers, meaning when they hit the live bait, they like to hold it in their mouth and swim around for a couple really? minutes. So, you know, me with fly fishing or even bass fishing, you feel a little tap, tap. You're like, oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. So I missed four or five tuna before I actually set the hook. They're like, let it go. Just leave the bail open, let it swim around. And it's, for me, it's like, it, it's, it's tough because yeah. I power fish wherever I go. And so finally I close the bail, crank that sucker down as tight as possible and start setting the hook. And man, it took me for a ride. Uh, oh and, God. you know, one of the most memorable moments of pulling in uh, an ahi on a kayak uh, was, was something special. Uh, catching on a boat, great. Everybody does that. But on a kayak, pedaling from shore, going out to a pinnacle, finding the fish, and then catching it was just an absolute blast. So kind of goes along the lines of what's my favorite type of fishing. Kayak fishing is, is hard to beat. Coleco, you are nuts and I love you. <laughs> you're amazing. That yeah, you're right. You have to be a little crazy to be fishing. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I can't imagine in a kayak those type of seas and and the kind of fish you're pulling in, knowing full well, you know, you got some other big fish, you know, coming at you at any time. And oh, yeah. huge boats. And I mean, right. that's insane. It's exhilarating and heart pumping yeah. all at the same time. So I yeah. feel you on that. I love that. <laughs> that's awesome, Coleco. Um yeah, that's great. Now, would you say do you have, I always ask everybody on the show what their most memorable fishing story is, uh, something they've lost, maybe the one that got away or yeah. one you've maybe caught. It could be the biggest one or maybe it could even be the smallest one, but it was more memorable to you for a special reason. Sure. Do you have sure. one? Uh, well, there? you know, just explaining that Ahi experience was, you know, one of, one of the memorable ones. Um, However, being a being a dad, I I have these two memorable experiences of taking my daughters fishing, oh, wow. and it was uh, you know, it was Lair of the Bear. It's called. It's in um, kind of on your way past Red Rocks. I think it's a, a big uh, monument that everybody can relate to, and it's this little stream that uh, a lot of folks uh, hike, uh, even bike as well. I'm uh, also a mountain biker, and we can get into that as well. But um, <laughs> Uh, I took my fly rod and I had, you know, like those baby backpacks where you put your, yeah. your kid in the, in the deal and you just keep trekking. <laughs> um, so we were trekking along 
uh, with this, you know, this day pack, my daughter's in the back, uh, I'm fly fishing, I'm, you know, catching these little brookies, little, um, uh, little, little stalker trouts. So we get to this one spot and uh, we set up a little picnic, right? And I was like, you know what, I'm going to have my daughter, you know, just fling the uh, fly rod forward and let those midges float by. And you know what, Nicole, after like two or three little casts, she caught one. And <laughs> yes, yes. My wife caught all my expressions, experiences on that. You must have been and so as, proud. As, as a dad and as an avid fly fisherman, having a little one, and I can't even remember how old my oldest daughter was at the time. She's probably just out of diapers. You know, she can, you know, have the proprioception to, you know, figure out what she's holding and how to manipulate it. And she caught it. <laughs> then she like swings it to me. So I got to kind of like catch it in the air. You know, that, that whole experience oh, was great. probably my memorable, most memorable experience with my daughter. And, you know, every fly shop, um, a fly fishing like-minded person, I always tell that story because, you know, as, as a dad passing on that, um, that fishing type uh, experience was just incredible to me. That's beautiful. And I know <laughs> nothing you ever do in the future or have done in the past could ever compare to that, especially yeah. being a father. And I love that. I love that, uh, especially having that on the show. And I always say that, you know, family is the most important thing. And especially nowadays, you know, we've lost so much grip on that. And it yep. just means a lot to regain that and to have that again. Family is important. Uh, everything else, you know, goes around it. Uh, at yep. least it is to me. And uh, so to be able to hear that, uh, that, you know, being a father and not being the most proudest moment is really uh, amazing. And I, I, I really relate to that. So that's beautiful. Um, yeah, now, yeah. do they know how do they know how crazy their dad is? Do they? Oh know? yeah, they, they're well aware. <laughs> <laughs> I think my wife and I are coming up on our twentieth year, maybe twenty-one year being together. She'll probably kick congratulations. Me. Yeah, I know. We're God, we met when we were teenagers back in uh university of hawaii uh so she she knew exactly what she was signing up for um, <laughs> outside of the age i think my my uh my mind my brain uh my inner soul think that i'm still 13 years old but man those kinks are starting to catch up <laughs> you're right but you're only as old as you feel Felico. you're only as old as you feel there you go. <laughs> age is just the number <laughs> yep. You could be 80 years old out there trekking in Colorado through the mountains, yeah. and as long That's as you the feel thing here in Colorado, your heart, yeah. Everyone seems like they're just absolutely fit. Um, I used to, I used to race tries and actually qualified nationally um, in the uh, Olympic and sprint distance, not the Ironman, uh, which is a goal of mine, but not right now. Um, and it seems like when you go to these these races, man, you look around, you're like, wow, these you know, they, you know, they look like they're in shape, but it's like, man, they, they're weathered. But man, you, when you told the line with a lot of these individuals here, they can run, they can ride, they can swim. And you're absolutely right. You know, here in Colorado, the, the community, you know, not just around um, fishing uh, and the outdoors, but just the lifestyle yep. really motivates um, an individual like myself, you know, the, the, the people we surround our family with, uh, just a lot of like-minded folks that want to enjoy the outdoors. And, you know, you asked me um, about Denver, you know, that's another aspect of Denver that they, the, the lifestyle here in Denver is just top it's notch. It's amazing. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I've visited and uh, I've seen it myself just visiting and I love it. You know, I really do. It's, it's, it really is amazing. It's, it's, and you have to live there to feel it and know it too. You know, I know. Yeah. Uh, just coming in on the outside. I don't even know the full extent of it, you know, just visiting, but it is beautiful place and I need to visit it more. That's for sure. Um, so what is it? Uh, now you said you're mountain biking. You you're into mountain I biking do. too. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, that, that was one of the first things I jumped in face first and, and to do because man, the, the single track trails, uh, not to mention the downhill, which that's also, you know, you got to have a little you gotta have a couple of screws loose because <laughs> I mean, you're flying down these what ski resorts turned into downhill mountain biking. And, you know, I'm sure you saw it on, on, on the gram, but man, you're just in full body armor 
holding on to this, what looks like a dirt bike without an engine, flying down these mountains. Um, I only can do that so much because eventually uh, I'm probably going to get seriously hurt <laughs> or, you know, not make it down the mountain. Uh, however, you know, with, with the mountain bike, that was kind of the first uh, access point to some of that backcountry fly fishing. So, you know, I had this and I bought this specific fly fishing vest with a water cell in the back where I could throw on the bike and just go. And there's like the camel fun. pack. You like you yeah. have the hose through it. Yeah. 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 We have so one now. We have extremists had came out with yes. it. Oh, the hydration pack. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's awesome. Yes, I know exactly. Um, just you you do have to have a few screws loose to do that too, Coleco. You fit perfectly <laughs> in there. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Um, so what is it that uh, you how'd you get involved with casking? What is it that you do for casking? So it's such a great story, and um, I can pick up where I leave off in this uh, short narrative. I started uh, I started kayak tournaments about two or three years ago, uh, on and off doing one tournament, uh, etc. And um, this past year, you know, with COVID, I was grounded and not. Uh, I didn't fly and, and meet clients. Everything was virtual. Um, I started fishing uh, our kayak tournament series uh, held through our uh, Colorado Kayak Fishing Club. It's a nonprofit organization. Um, amazing things uh, that they do. They donate all the uh, uh, proceeds to a nonprofit at the end uh, of the season. So great, great way to give back. Uh, so in 2020, I started doing more. And uh, I did a couple before I won my first tournament uh, at 11 Mile Reservoir. And after I won that tournament, uh, I had a couple of my, um, I, I would say advisory buddies that said, Coleco, you need to have some sort of social media presence. Uh, and the reason why is because I like to make these silly fishing videos. Uh, <laughs> when I'm on the plane or, you know, when the kids go to bed and they're like, this is, this is something great. Like you're a Hawaiian in Colorado fishing out of a kayak as well as all these other, uh, as what they call it, this elite dad stuff that you do. I'm like, okay. So as soon as I turned on my Instagram from private to public, I started getting hits from organizations uh, as well as uh, my neighbor, uh, he, at the time, and I, I can't remember the timeline here, was neighbors with Al Norker. Wow, wow. <laughs> and he's like, hey, Al, my neighbor is an incredible fisherman. I've been fishing with Joe for many years. I also go backcountry archery hunting with um, Joe. What he's is like, it you don't do, Coleco? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and so Joe's like, Al, you got to meet this kid. And so as soon as I, I met Al, he's like, oh, you know, we have this ambassadors program where, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There's some uh, benefits for you and, and some of the folks that purchase through your account. I'm like, not interested, Al, but thank you so much. And Al was like, you know what? You're not the average fisherman. How about we do this? How about you, you start uh, cutting film like the gloves that uh, Scott gave me, or um, I think was the uh, hammock, uh, other things, cut film for casking, come on as a pro angler, and in your fishing videos, make sure casking gear is highly visible, and we'll make sure we take care of you. <laughs> and that was the beginning of a really great relationship, not just professionally, uh, but personally, um, I've gotten to know uh, Al and his family very well. Uh, I've got to meet Millie, his uh, German short hair, uh, <laughs> and, and I've gone on all kinds of excursions with him. And a lot, I have to say, a lot of the information, the fishing style that I have absorbed over that past just a short one year, uh, I've learned from Al Norker, especially uh, the high country fishing 
um, it's a different bird, just like you said, going from New York to uh, Florida. However, we're just going a couple miles from, you know, 50 to 80, which is Denver's elevation to the high country. The trout is very different. Um, pike is very different. So um, that's, that's kind of how uh, casking and Coleco kind of came about, was these silly fishing videos. A neighbor knew Al. He's like, you guys meet this guy <laughs> here we are <laughs> it's funny because i made silly videos as well and that's how i got into casking uh right. some from my videos I, I did some crazy videos actually weren't some weren't even fishing ones but i did a lot of fishing and i was on youtube and i just did a lot of fun videos i used to be a cop yeah. and uh so i would do some cop videos just some fun ones and they were like and she's funny you know yeah, we like her you know and mm -hmm. so that was that was how i guess but that's pretty that's really cool i love al al is a really great guy love working yeah. for him and uh love being a part of this company i really do it's really great and i'm so glad to have you on now you mentioned archery yeah. you're in archery too <laughs> yeah so you know even even more of a, a country uh turn back the clock in middle school we had, you know, uh, like those, I think they call it enrichment classes now. Mm -hmm. um, we had an art teacher that taught archery, an art teacher that taught archery in these enrichment periods. And that was the uh, first and certainly not the last time I picked up a bow and was like, this is awesome. Um, fast forward to that uh, experience, Hawaii is almost like, the best kept hunting secret in the United States. And the reason why I say that is because the amount of animals to pursue uh, in the Hawaiian chain is fascinating, right? Almost every island has a specific type of animal that you can pursue. That's, I guess what I would say considered an exotic animal. Obviously there's no goats or hogs or deer that swam right. through the Hawaiian <laughs> island. So all brought in, right? And with the European goats, obviously with the, um, the, the, the whaling ships and, and folks, you know, basically the mid port of Pacific, uh, there folks would leave the goats and now the goats are plentiful across almost every island. But uh, along with that, uh, obviously hogs are plentiful throughout uh, all eight islands. Um, but on Kauai specifically, there's black tail deer um wow. there's pheasant hunting uh we have blues uh ring necks uh, on the big island there's real turkeys that you can pursue oh move lawn um sheep uh and uh hogs in that island as well on maui molokai and i believe lanai there's access deer so okay. when you when you talk about all of that you know, you can certainly plan a, a, a great outdoor vacation, you know, coupling archery hunting with deep sea fishing. And, you know, I'm, I'm probably the best, uh, <laughs> the best at, you know, highlighting what, uh, what outdoor activities are, are there, at least from the like-minded folks that would be listening to these podcasts. I think Joe Rogan actually did uh, a, a, maybe a podcast or a, a show yes. in Hawaii. Yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh, that's insane. You're insane, Felico. That's that's amazing. Uh, is there anything else that you do that we haven't covered? Uh, <laughs> archery, you know, yeah. kayaking, you're fishing. <laughs> well, you know what's, what's funny, uh, and it's a big part of my life, not too visible on Instagram, which I should, uh, is CrossFit. And I got into CrossFit, actually training, doing a brick train uh deal past uh the local and i'm pointing like it's right here it's literally across the street from me it's wow. uh crossfit cherry creek and i was running past these extremely fit boys and girls like carrying sandbags and logs i was like i want to do that <laughs> and so you know i i flipped a yui and met uh at the time uh ryan woods and don Lowe, who's the uh, owners don Lowe is now the sole owner of crossfit cherry creek and I said, I want to do something crazy like what you guys are just doing right now. Did an intro class and um, fell in love with it. I've been doing CrossFit now for about, I want to say six, six or seven years. And um, 
currently uh, I'm ranked in the world 75th amongst 40 to 45 year olds. That's wonderful, Kaliko. That's such incredible. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. I mean, if, if you had to pick one thing out of everything that you do, and you do a lot, would you think fishing is at the highest? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Because that's, that's how I feel. So I figured you would feel that was the same. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, no, it, fishing, it, you know, everyone say that cliche, it's a lifestyle. Well, in Hawaii, you know, certainly um, fishing was a way to bring home smiles, not just from the individual who caught it, but when you bring it home, it's such a celebration of family and friends. And when I say gatherings, there's always a gathering. You know, when people visit the islands of Hawaii, it's like people always are hanging out in their garage. So it's like, because <laughs> we love to talk story or vala'au and whatever we bring home, it's certainly a, a celebration amongst everyone. And, you know, when there's, you know, if, if we ever call it too much, the likelihood of that individual to share amongst the community is just immense. And so um, when I, you know, when early in the podcast, we were, we were talking about the camaraderie, we we're talking about that bond, that true yes, um, yes. island feel. Kauai is just that. that um, the, the way a small community makes it is because of the people sharing their catch. And early on, I experienced that because my pops, uh, and pops before him, both grandfathers, were extremely generous of their catch. And, you know, going from household to household, witnessing, you know, the smiles, the joy, the celebration of, wow, thank you so much, Papa Frank. Thank you so much, Papa Tino. What they shared through the community was like, man, I, I want to be, I want to be looked at like how my grandfathers and fathers uh, were looked at when they brought the catch home, when they shared the smiles, you know, breaking bread as they call it <laughs> together. That's what it's all about, you know, catching it, great. Experiencing it, yes. But when you come home, even the small community that I live in, I, I live in a private uh, community of 70 homes. People seeing me come in with my tundra and this 14 foot tub <laughs> in the back of my truck, they're like, oh, Kaliko must have some walleye. And, sure enough, <laughs> and some you know, stories. <laughs> folks come around. They're like, so I'm like, give me a couple minutes and we'll start start breading the walleye and come back to the what we call the oligo gazebo. <laughs> I built the gazebo in the back of my house. Um, we we deep fry the walleye and just share stories and and enjoy, you know, and that's what it's all about. Kaliko, that is absolutely amazing. And and again, that's exactly what it's all about. I love that. Like family oriented, everybody community coming together uh, and centered around fishing fishing again bringing people together and it does that uh in its own special way and there's a special language that fishermen speak and if you don't understand it you're not a fisherman uh, <laughs> you know what i'm talking about and so yeah. i i i understand that and it's that's that's the beauty of it and i love that and yeah. uh that's really great now you have social media sites is there any ones you want to mention so that our listeners can jump on and follow your great adventures because you're everywhere sure sure um currently i only have Instagram. And since my name is so unique, you can find me at Calico Oligo. No dashes, no numbers. Uh, and eventually, I think a YouTube channel is in the near future. Yes. Certainly I'll, <laughs> we, need I'll, to, uh, we need to follow I'll take you. Advices. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'll take any advice on, on how to get that going. Um, I've never been a Facebook guy. I've, I've never ever started Facebook and a lot of folks have tried to twist my arm and I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> Instagram is enough. You know, I, I, if you ask my wife, she's like, oh, you're, why don't you just post something already? I take so long to, you know, read it. Babe, can you read this? Is this sound okay? <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, if there's one thing that you could say to our listeners, one thing yeah. for maybe our young listeners out there, uh, or just our listeners in general about anything, about life, about the way that you live, what would it be about, you know, living life? How do you see it? You know, what, what's one thing you, you could mention to them um, uh, sure. about? 
I think I think the great analogy is uh, the small business that I, I currently have. Um, <laughs> the, the, the funny part about turning on my Instagram to public was organizations like Casking and, and other small organizations was saying, hey, could you do a commercial for us? Could you <laughs> do you know li these little uh, snippets, uh, social media clips, or you know beef up our web presence? Um, yeah, sure. And so actually, I, I started a, a videography company last last year, Oligo and Company, um, and it has taken off. So uh, with that being said, you have to take chances. Um, you cannot sit back and say something will happen. You have to put yourself out there. Exactly. Um, being this little boy, and I say I'm still little, I'm only five foot five. Uh, this little Hawaiian coming from a little town of 500, if I didn't put myself out there, you know, I, I can't say all the things uh, that I just said to you now, the successes, the failures along the way. If you're not putting yourself out there, um, you're not going to get noticed. You're not going to, you're not going to have that opportunity. And when I say putting yourself out there, you know, I'm not just saying, you know, look at a college option, look at uh, a career option. You have to, you have to try things out and see for yourself. Um, you know, that's, that's the reason why people have these internships. That's why people <clears throat> have these part-time experiences, you know, a, 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 as early as high school, because you're testing the waters. So if you're not putting yourself out there, um, you're, you're missing out. You have to, you have to take the risks. You have to take those chances. It, it's part yeah. of life. You know, yes, Absolutely. you may fail. Failure is inevitable. It is. Yeah. It's inevitable. You're going to fail, but it's getting back up and getting back out there. That's Absolutely. Like, the most important thing is. And yes, yeah. that's yeah. It's great advice. Um, Kaliko, one more thing. Can you tell our listeners how you say goodbye and hi in Hawaii? Oh, that's easy. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> Kaliko, aloha. It was absolutely wonderful to have you on the show. Yeah. You are amazing. Thank you so much. I can't wait to have you back on. I can't wait to hear about more adventures. I mean, I'm excited. I'm I'm into this. Kaliko, let's go. <laughs> absolutely. Or, you know, the, the, there's a lot of room uh, for us to, to chat with Al and say, hey, let's do a Denver segment. Let's do a Florida segment. But most let's importantly, do it. let's do a Casting Hawaii. Fishing Frenzy Live, the outdoor show. Let's do it. A Kaliko show. I'm I'm ready. I'm there. <laughs> Excellent. Nico, it was great to have you on. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much, Nicole. K A S T K I N G spells affordable innovation. Make the switch to Casking for the best value in fishing gear. Casking offers you an affordable quality alternative to high priced fishing products. Thanks for spending time today with Casking on the Line. I'm Nikki. This has been Calico. Again, aloha, Calico. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a great day. Can't wait to see you again. Sounds good. Bye now.